I thought I'd read this article called Allah Wants ISIS to Retreat by FP. It looks entertaining. So I think I'll read it. The caliphate propagandists are digging through the Quran to prove that getting beaten back in Mosul doesn't stray from the predained plan. And there's your, your, your Sunni uh, ISIS Muslims uh, saying Allahu Akbar and uh, or I call it Aloha Snack Bar. Why has the Islamic State lost some of the territories under its control? And why has it lost some of its leaders? This was the headline of an article published last week by a pro-Islamic State media outlet. As its leaders are picking up, pick as its leaders are picked off from the sky, as its economic resources run dry, and as its prized caliphate slips from its grasp, Mosul likely being the next casualty. The Islamic State supporters are looking for explanations for why the tide of war has turned against them. The facts on the ground, after all, no longer support the Islamic State's triumphalist slogan, which is remaining and expanding. Bakia wa tatan madadad. How, one may well ask, does a group that projected such embounded confidence whose legitimacy seemed to rest on seizing uh, and controlling large territories, adjusts its message to less fortunate circumstances, you know? The answer is surprisingly simple. The Islamic State's mouthpieces preach that this is a period of trial. It's not that Allah, they say God here, it's not that Allah has ceased to favor the Islamic State, for that is, of course, inconceivable. Rather, divine favor comes with ups and downs. It's, it's Allah's practice to subject his creation to trials and tests, even though Allah knows everything. Uh, uh, as he, it, Allah, uh, subjected the prophets and the early Muslims before our time. As a result, this misfortune is nothing to cry over. On the contrary, as the above article puts it, quote, We should rejoice in God's choice. Yeah, all his choice. To extend the period of preparation, tribulation, and difficulty, end quote. The Islamic State, however, only began offering such explanations reluctantly. As recently as April 2016, the group was still assuming, uh, still assuring that its followers, uh, assuring that it's assuring its followers that all was well in the central lands of the caliphate. That month, despite having recently lost control of the city of Ramadi, its weekly Arabic newsletter Al Naba, Al Naba, uh, downplayed the significance of its losses. Quote. The withdrawal of the caliphate's soldiers from areas on the ground in Iraq and Syria. Read the editorial uh, of the April 16 issue. Quote, In no way means that its enemies on the ground dot, 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 have grown stronger and more powerful than it. The reality shows that they are in a state of great weakness and despite thousands of airstrikes have failed to achieve decisive victories against the army of the caliphate. Unquote. It was a month later. Oh, by the way, how much time do I have left here? Oh, yeah, I, I can still do it, yeah. It was a month later, and the group's leaders publicly acknowledged that the caliphate was contracting. On May 21st, the official spokesman of the Islamic State, Abu Muhammad al-Adnani, uh, delivered, delivered a speech finally confirming coming to terms with the battlefield setbacks, partly because it was his last address. Adnani was killed four months later in a U.S. airstrike. Must have been sleeping in an empty pickup truck. 
His words have been memorialized in official and unofficial Islamic State media, reverberating in the videos, essays, and postings that have appeared online since. In his speech, Adnani introduced, or rather reintroduced, the themes of patience and resilience in the face of hardship. The Islamic State may be down, he suggested, but that most certainly it was not up. The key line, and the most, and one most cited today by the Islamic State's members and fanboys, concerns the true meaning of victory and defeat. Quote, do you think, America, that victory is in the death of one of Martin Luther's, in one of Martin Luther's, for that is a false victory. We were you victorious when you killed Abu Musab al Zarqari or Abu Hamza al Maharaj Maharaj or Abu Omar al Baghdadi or Osama bin Laden? No way. Victory is for the adversary to be, to be defeated. Or do you reckon, America, that and that defeat is the loss of a city or the loss of a territory? Were we defeated? When we lost cities in Iraq and came in to be in the desert with no territory and no land, will, will we be defeated and you will be victorious if you take Mosul, Sartre, so Raqqa and all the cities and will you return to how and will we return to how we were before? No, for defeat is the loss of the will and desire to fight. Fighting for a religion that uh, preaches, uh, the, whose founder, Muhammad, preaches that we go through a 40-day blood clot stage, or that the sun sits in muddy spring, or then asks permission of Allah to rise again. As Adnani said, and as numerous among his followers have repeated, the loss of leaders and land is immaterial to the Islamic State. So long as it has its will, it shall remain. How much time do I have left here? Oh yeah, I still have some. Significantly, while Adnani did use the term remaining in his speech, he did not pretend that the Islamic State was still expanding. Uh, the other part of the group's slogan. Indeed, the Islamic State's propaganda has since been heavy, heavy on resilience over expansion. This represents, in return, to the theme at the heart of the Islamic State for so many years, survival. The desert experience to which Adnan, Adnani alluded, to, alluded was the period between 2006 and 2012 when the Islamic State, then called the Islamic State of Iraq, ISI, was widely ridiculed clandestine, was a widely ridiculed clandestine guerrilla force. It was amid these circumstances that ISIS, ISI's first leader, Abu Omar al-Baghdadi declared a 2007 speech that the state was, quote, remaining, giving birth to the original slogan. For years, it was only a promise of remaining, not remaining and expanding. That served as a group slogan. The second word was tacked on early on in 2013 with the attempted annexation of Syria. In his speech, Adnan, Adnani recalled the group's time in the desert as one of trial and testing. And this is, and it is this idea that, again, taken center stage in the Islamic State's media today, the most recent editorial in El Naba, that's their ISIS's uh, paper, uh, for example, remind, reminders readers of Allah's exhibit, it says God here, but I'm going to say Allah because it's an insult to God. Reminder re, reminds readers of Allah's habit of quote trying the believers with misfortune and hardship, even though Allah is supposed to know know all things. Before Allah's victory will descend upon them. See how much time I have here. Okay, I'll continue here. Similarly, the previous week's editorial centered on the apparently inspired story of People of the Ditch a mythical group of early monotheists mentioned in the Quran who flung themselves on a burning pitch rather than submit to the polytheists. The message, the editorial it argued, was that the Islamic State's followers ought to look at the present war through the eyes of the people of the ditch. Then they will understand the struggle isn't about cities that we rule or land that we roam about in. It is a matter of the religion that we seek to stand up. In other words, they're going to go out they're going to go dead 
dying for religion. That uh, the Quran, uh, whose book the Quran says it uh, confirms the before scriptures Bible, even though all Muslims believe the Bible is corrupted. I think I'll end it here and give part two coming up. Bye.